Okay, so for today's video, we're going to mess with some of these little uh, Bluetooth dongles here. Uh, this one's the one I use with, like, uh, LS Droid, doing a little tuning there, PCM Hammer also. Uh, but th this time, uh, I'm going to stick with the cheaper one for this video, but this is going to be a how to replace your uh, bench tester with a cheap, like, $5 dongle. I can't remember how much this thing costs, but it's less than 20 bucks. Uh, I've had it for a while now. It's great for going in, resetting your, um, your, your trouble code in your truck instead of fixing the problem in it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, nice little, uh, dongle here, not sponsored or anything, you know, you can do with either one of them. I'm just doing this video with the cheaper one of the two, so that way y'all don't go buy a $50 dongle when a $5 one will do it, uh, just the same. So we're going to do the video with this one. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's get into this. We're just going to be doing a little, uh, uh, serial over Bluetooth and, uh, talking to the, this, uh, it's an Elm 3. 327 chip or three yeah 327 um that we're going to be talking to in here uh and uh yeah let's uh let's get into this okay so uh this is going to be our pile of tools we're using in this video so we have our obd2 um bluetooth dongle a uh actual bluetooth dongle here because my computer doesn't have it if your computer already supports Bluetooth, you don't need one of these. And then a OBD2 adapter. Um, I just cut it out of the truck. So um, you don't actually have to use this. You could just put uh, wires directly to it if you wanted. But I find this easier. Just go to the junkyard and cut it out of there. So then just put your Bluetooth dongle on there. Hook it up to your adjustable power supply and the plug because we're... This isn't really the tool, but we're, we'll be testing it on a uh, 2003 or 2004 instrument cluster. I recently got it as a core. It's kind of an unknown working condition. I know it works because it was working in his truck, um, but I don't know how well it works. So we'll find that out in the video, I guess. But uh, let's get this all untangled here. All right. Hooking it up, we just have our normal power hookups here, and then the gray output is the data line here. Uh, so I don't actually have an alligator clip on here, so I'm going to use the alligator clip from my normal bench tester uh, to hold it onto there. All right, so gray. And then power. Now we're all wired up. We'll plug it into the instrument cluster. We'll just power it up real quick to verify that our instrument cluster is working. The uh, positive lead came off of there. Where did it go? There it is. There, there we go. It is working. And as you can see, we have power to our Bluetooth dongle. Um, so yeah, I, I had the bench tester powered up. I just powered it down there. Uh, so yeah, it is working. Park reverse neutral is dead on this one. And uh, temperature is definitely a bad stepper motor there. Uh, so throughout the test, we'll just pay attention to all the rest. Ignore whatever is going on with the coolant temperature since that's clearly a bad stepper motor. All right, so uh, let's continue on. Let's actually take a look at this in the software now, uh, connecting to it over Bluetooth. And uh, before we really get too far into this, let's just go over the basics here of, um, you know, if you used your Bluetooth dongle, which you showed earlier, uh, and have never actually paired to this, all you should do, uh, go into your settings, add Bluetooth device here, and click that, and then it'll search for it, and you can connect to it. I'm already paired to mine, so see, you can see it here, it just says OBD2, uh, so we're done there. After you've paired to it, you just check your uh, device manager here, and you'll see that it gives you a bunch of serial com ports and you just have to guess the right one unfortunately uh so let's go into kitty here which kitty is a fork of putty that uh allows for um uh, scripting so so uh mike suggested this to me so we're gonna give it a try here 
uh, we need to uh, force on local echo and go ahead and open our session here should work all right so we got it open now let's take a look at um, Campbell's post Campbell is the uh, viewer that actually made my new logo uh, so he made this post in um, pcmhacking.net which we're going to link to in the description here which is our cheat sheet to everything we need to do here so uh, we'll go over as we enter it so ATL1 uh, enables uh, a new line after each command and then ATH1 enables headers and then ATSH it, it's uh, priority destination and sender uh, let's just copy the rest of this so that way I don't have to type it out all right um, and then we need AT a L which that enables long messages okay um, in the uh, caps lock it's not case sensitive on here so this first message here uh, is going to uh, light up all of the lights that are controlled over the uh, serial so just paste that in there press enter and there we go now all of our serial controlled lights come on check engine light is not serial controlled it actually has its own wire so uh, let's go into the next one here uh, which is the it sweeps all the gauges all right so as you can see we have a bad stepper motor here all the rest of them swept and that one got stuck so this one has at least two bad stepper motors in it um, and then this one is going to turn all of the blocks on on the VFD here uh, however, this, it's probably not going to come across camera, but we'll just go ahead and put the command in anyways. So there we go, and yep, all the blocks came on, and that's really all there is to it. This this is super simple. We just have to give it a couple of commands because these are so these commands are uh, Elm three twenty seven specific commands. Um, so there's actually a data sheet for it. SparkFun has the data sheet that has all of the commands that are in there. Uh, since this one's a clone, some of the commands don't actually work. Um, but I'm sure that's just because it's a cheap Chinese clone. Uh, in a genuine one, they would work. Like uh, at at one won't work. Um, it's not going to give you the device description and stuff like that. So yeah, we we have all of all, all of these different commands. Like uh, another one, like ATRV um, gives you the read voltage. So we'll just go ahead and do that real quick. It's not very accurate, but ATRV. All right, so it says we're at 1.9 volts when we really have 14.3 volts coming in. So not very accurate, but it does uh, do that, which uh, could be useful if you're trying to write an app uh, that's going to check, like, hey, make sure the battery is not dead before start programming the EEPROMs or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, super simple to, to do some of these commands. So let's try uh, writing a script for it um, so that way we don't actually have to... Um, to, to type out everything every single time uh, and we can just get it to run through the the commands here uh, so let's 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 do that now okay so open up uh, notepad here to do your scripting because the scripting super complicated for this you that is what you need to notepad it's, it's actually super simple um, so it gives you kind of a hint here of what we're doing because it asks you know like a line uh, delay and everything so clearly it's just going to spit out line by line whatever you put into your uh, text see it, it's looking for either a uh, .scr or .txt so we're just going to do as a text file and let's just copy and paste this that's uh, all we have to do here to make our script uh, super simple so paste that in there and then save as and we'll just save it as um, let's let's just name this obd2 um and just save that that's all we have to do to it all right now uh we still have our we have to set our session you know serial com 9 which is what i'm using i don't know what your computer will be 
Um, we can force this on if we want again, but we're not really going to be doing any typing. Um, and then, so do our script, we'll set it to replay. Uh, we're going to put a line delay of half a second. Uh, so that's in milliseconds there. And we don't need a character delay. And so let's browse open and then OBD2. And then instead of hitting the open button, click the start button. And there we go. We ran through it, it lit everything up, it slid all the gauges, and it turned on all the blocks there. So that's that's all there is to writing a script for this. So very simple. Um, this script's there. I, I'm not gonna like link the script, just copy and paste it yourself to, to make it. Um, but yeah, that'll that'll uh, make the whole thing work for you. So that way you don't have to type out everything every single time. Um, so pretty useful little script there. Just let you sweep the gauges and uh, maybe in the future we'll see a, another script for this uh, but doing uh, programming the EEPROM because it is totally possible to program the EEPROM with one of these uh, but I have to read through all the instructions so Michael emailed me all the instructions to, to programming the EEPROMs uh, with one of these I'll have to read through it so that way I actually understand it before doing a video. I just have not had a chance to sit down and uh, and read it and see exactly what's going on there. I don't I don't like doing videos without actually understanding what's going on. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, here somebody emailed me this and, and let's do it. Um, so yeah, I do I do want to sit down and actually read through the whole thing and figure it out. Uh, but yeah, this is a nice simple little tutorial here for you guys so that way y'all can replace your super bulky um, testers with just one of these little Bluetooth dongles because most of us have a computer or tablet handy and you can do all of this on a tablet too because um, you just install a terminal app on there and do the same thing because that's also what Kitty and Putty are are they they're just regular kind of terminal applications uh, so that way you can do uh, you, you you can do your serial ports or your TTLs or wh you know whatever you need to do. Um, we're we're just using it for the serial port here. Uh, but yeah, I I, um, I I think this was a pretty useful write up that they did, and I wanted to share their information. Uh, as you can see, he uh, he wrote this up a while ago because I respond. He wrote it on the 14th, and I responded on the 15th, so uh, of December. So yeah, it's it's been a little while. I've been meaning to do a video on it. Um, I've also been trying to see if anybody's done uh, GM Class 2 with an Arduino, which there is one that uh, Pete, the guy that made LS Droid, wrote that's on an at Mega. I don't have a. Uh, uh, sorry, not a. Well, it is an at Mega, but the uh, it's the Arduino Mega uh, that that it's on. I don't have an Arduino Mega right now to do the testing with, uh, but yeah, it's a Mega two five six zero um, that that he wrote it on. It looks like it's just a basic pass through like this, which is what I was looking to do with it. Because once you make it as a pass through, you can do you can do other things too. Okay, well, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I think it was a pretty useful one. I, I really think a big thank you goes out to uh, Michael and Campbell for uh, writing out all the stuff there. Uh, I think uh, Michael really had the know-how there, and then Campbell took it and wrote it up as a nice little write-up there, so it made, made it possible for all the rest of us. So definitely, I, I think this is a, a very uh, useful little tool. It doesn't have to be this brand. Any of those little... Uh, ELM327 knockoffs or genuines will work. Uh, I haven't actually tested it, but it should work with this too. It may have some different commands with it. I'd have to go check the OBD link uh, data sheets on these things just to verify, but I, I am fairly certain that it does work. I just haven't uh, plugged it in and checked it. But if it doesn't work, I'll, uh, I'll do another write-up. Because I know a lot of guys are going to have these since they work with PCM Hammer and um, and LS Droid. Now, LS Droid is going to is going to kill support to these. They're, 
They're they're gonna quit supporting him here in the future, and you're gonna have to buy his uh, dongle that he's making here soon. Um, so I, the reason the reason why he's killing support is he's been having issues with it working with his app for some reason. I don't know why, uh, because um, it, there's no issues with it with PCM Hammer. Um, so uh, I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, I don't really care either. It just uh, he is gonna kill support to these. Just be aware of that if you're looking at uh doing stuff strictly with ls droid you might want to consider buying his dongle instead of one of those now if you're using pcm hammer which is a very uh powerful tool uh then uh you just go ahead and get that uh, and i like pcm hammer i actually uh i think pcm hammer is a little bit more convenient than ls droid because then i don't have to plug my phone into the computer when I'm done. I'd rather just use my computer with it. Uh, PC uh, LS Droid is adding uh, support for Windows. I would expect it by the end of next month because uh, he's doing his final testing there with that. So just kind of news in this world there. I uh, wasn't really planning on putting that in there, but I just I follow the guys and read their stuff. So yeah, if, if you were interested in those tools, uh, just be aware uh, LS Droid is coming to Windows. Uh, LS Droid also got hacked uh, this week. Um, they their database got deleted. So I guess somebody hacked in the database, um, realized there was nothing useful in there, and then just deleted the whole thing. Uh, my suspicion on it is that it was really just an SQL injection, and they probably didn't even download anything. They probably just deleted the whole database. And it, like, it was probably some script kitty that like knows how to do an SQL injection and just deleted the whole thing. Um, hey, yeah, everyone's like, oh my god, HP Tuners is out to destroy Elastro right now. It's, it's some script kitty. No, there's no real company out doing it. I mean, if there's a real company out doing it, it's one of the... Chinese tool vendors or something. I, I I highly doubt HP Tuners or EFI Live uh, would do something like that. There's a lot of speculation in all of the the groups that that's what happened, but no. Uh, and, and I mean, there was no, there's no need for that app to talk back. Anyways, it, it, they it should all just run on the phone, in my opinion. Uh, the only reason to make the app talk to a database is to eventually monetize the app and make it where you have to pay for a subscription or something like that. There's, you know, the, the only database you'd really need is one like, hey, version ID. Okay, this is the current version ID. Uh, go download the update. Uh, you know, stuff like that. The, you know, I, I understand what they're doing in the database. Like uh, one of the things that keeps track of if you have... Um, downloaded like like you've read the pcm three times or whatever they you know you now have like you have to do this thing three times before it'll let you write uh i can't remember what it is um but yeah ls droid starting to kind of hold your hand i don't uh i'm not a fan of apps that do stuff like that uh but i <laughs> i i get why he's doing it i'm sure people have bricked their pcms and we're like oh it's your fault even though it's their fault they didn't they didn't do their homework. They didn't know what they were doing. So uh, that's just my opinion. I, I like PCM Hammer because it's open source and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make you jump through hoops to, to do what you want to do. And it's not, you know, talking back to some database for no real reason. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I don't know. If I were to write the, the app myself, if I were to take that kind of time, I wouldn't even involve a database at all. Like, there, there'd be nothing. I don't know. I just give you an APK and you have to, you know, you have to decide if it needs to be updated. Uh, my opinion on it, I, I wouldn't, you know, there wouldn't be any automatic update feature. Um, uh, I would go with the bare minimum because it, it's a free app. He's not, he's not charging you anything for the app. So if, if you're going to make a free app, you ought to make the bare minimum app. So he's going above and beyond with it, honestly. I. What I don't like about it is going above and beyond. Like it's it's not like there's anything wrong with what he's doing. So so don't don't feel like I'm hate. Okay, well I I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.